Number 54. In an accident, a solution containing 2.5 kilograms of nitric acid was spilled. Oh no. But 2 kilograms of sodium carbonate, which is Na2CO3, was quickly spread on the area and carbon dioxide, CO2, was released by the reaction. Was sufficient sodium carbonate, Na2CO3, used to neutralize all the acid? Great question. Let's figure it out. So the thing that I see here, and probably one of the the biggest things that we have to find out, is I see that I have a compound, right? Nitric acid, unfortunately, was spilled, right, in a, in a, a chemistry lab. However, whoever was the, you know, the chemist or, you know, whatever setting this was, somebody put two kilograms of sodium carbonate over the nitric acid. So it seems to me that nitric acid was placed and sodium carbonate was added to the nitric acid to make something. That sounds like an equation to me. Does it sound like an equation to you guys? So that's the first thing got to figure out what was the equation in which nitric acid reacted with sodium carbonate. Now, we did um, acid work in previous chapters, so this is a review for us, if you guys have been with us with all the playlists that we've been doing. Uh, Nitric acid is HNO3. I see that it's an ic acid. I know that ic acids come from ates in our polyatomics. So this would have been nitrate. So nitrate is NO3 minus, and then I just add an H in front of it. So that's like the quick rundown, but you could always go back to previous questions and you know, the playlist um, that we did our acids on. So for right now, I know that HNO3, the nitric acid, reacted with the Na2CO3. Now I have to figure out what is the products. Well, good thing is that if you guys are on this chapter's playlist, which I highly recommend you guys are, we've done tons of work with balancing equations, making balanced equations or making equations in general. So this will kind of be a review for us, all right? So if you want, pause the video and see if you could find out the products to this reaction. Now, for this one, it's a double displacement. I know that because I have two compounds, right? So remember, we've been teaching it as we swap, right? Outers go with outers and inners go with inners. So this is like the start of my two compounds. So did you guys get, I will actually put, I'll put the, uh, the sodium one first. I'll say that the first compound was NaNO3. And then the second compound, if we did the double displacement, it should have been H2CO3. Did you guys get this? Hopefully you did. But now there's a trick. Now they kind of gave you a little bit of a hint here. They said that carbon dioxide, CO2, was released. That means that it has to be a product. But when we did the double displacement, right, I got NaNO3, that's this compound, and then I got H2CO3. That's this compound. We should know that any time you make H2CO3, which is a carbonic acid, this completely breaks down into CO2 and H2O. So whenever you see this and you make this as a product, you say, "Mm -mm, I'm just gonna rearrange it. It's carbon dioxide and water. And if you do actually count up, you know the total elements here, they are exactly the same as H2CO3. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I spotted out that we made H2CO3. I'm going to say, okay, I know that this is just going to be CO2 and water. Okay, now, since I'm all the way on the right side, let's see if I could bring this beautiful. Okay, first part done. Now, before we work forward with actual numbers... We made a equation. We have to make sure that it's balanced. So just writing the equation is not good enough. Just make sure that you balanced it. So for example, if I just went on, right, and just tried to do the math, looky here, guys, there was two sodiums and only one sodium here. So all of my math, well, 
maybe if they were asking for those compounds, but if I was using those compounds, the math would have been off. So I have to balance. I have two sodiums, so I'm going to add that because I have two sodiums on the side. Uh, let's see, and now I have two nitrates, so I'm going to put a two in front of here. And I think now we're good. I have two hydrogens, two hydrogens. I got the one carbon, the one carbon, and then the three oxygens. There's three oxygens, and then two plus one is three. So now we're good. Okay. Now let's write down all the information that they gave us. Well, they said that, you know, this solution that was 2.5 kilograms of nitric acid. So right underneath the nitric acid, I'm going to write down that I had 2.5 kilograms. Cool. Now, they did say, you know, the scientist put down 2 kilograms of the sodium carbonate. Right? But the question is, was that enough? Sufficient means enough. Was that enough sodium carbonate? So maybe what we have to find is we actually have to find out how much was enough if we spilled 2.5 kilograms. So I'm going to find out how many kilograms was enough, right? How much was needed? If I have 2.5 kilograms, theoretically, I can find out how much was needed. And that's using the balance equation, the ratios, a.k.a. stoichiometry. Now, when we do stoichiometry, right, we usually follow this flow. If you guys have been with us, we've, we've seen this flow many, many, many times. So the flow diagram is right here. And it's no coincidence that I put the red, oh, maybe I'll just color this in black, the red for red and the blue for blue. The initial amount that you have is what you're going to be starting with. This is a grams to moles to moles to gram ratio. A represents the starting compound that you have the number for, and the B is what you're looking for, and that's this one. So I'm just going to cater this to what we have, right? We're gonna start with 2.5, but now here's the thing. Ooh, that's grams. We have it in kilograms. So what's the first thing that we got to do, guys? Yeah, we got to convert from kilograms to grams. How do we do that? Simple conversion. Kilograms to grams, all you got to do is multiply by 1,000. Similarly, you could just take that decimal and move it over three times to the left and fill in the, you know, uh, the, the placeholders. So this would basically be 2,500 grams. Yeah? So maybe I'll just go like that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, it's not A anymore. It's H NO3. I can go from grams of HNO3 to moles of HNO3. And then I'm going to convert into the units of my other compound that I want. In this case, let me pull this out a little bit just so that I have more room. And it's going to be the moles of Na2CO3 because I want to know the correct amount that I should have used. And then from there, we can go to grams. Okay. We have our flow. Now all this flow is just doing ratios and ratios and ratios. So always start with what you're given. In this case, we have the 2,500, and I'll color code this. So this is grams of HNO3. And if we're doing a ratio, we always multiply by a ratio, right? And you're going to put numbers and units on the top and the bottom of your division. Always work with your units first and then just double back. So... I don't want grams of HNO3, that goes on the bottom. I look over to see what I'm going to next, and that's the moles of HNO3. Now, we have to say to ourselves, okay, what conversion is this? Well, it's a gram to mole conversion of the same compound. We've done those. This is using the periodic table, PT. When you're using the periodic table, remember, you always have one mole of the compound. So wherever the word mole is, you put a one there. This amount going down in the bottom, in this case for grams, is the mass number on the periodic table. 
So get your calculus out, get your periodic tables out, and find out what the mass is of HNO3. I'm going to do it on my end, you do it on your end, and let's see if we get roughly the same answer. So I got one hydrogen, I got one nitrogen, and I got three oxygen, so three times 16. So I get roughly 63.018. Cool. Everything is accounted for here, so I can cancel out the unit that I don't want, and now we're at moles. So we're here. But I gotta get all the way over here at least. So I make another ratio. Times by the ratio, and do the same type of process again. Put the unit first. I don't want mole of HNO3 that goes on the bottom. And I just look over to see that moles of Na2CO3 goes up on the top. Now do you guys see, if I just stretch this out, now do you guys see that I'm dealing with two different compounds? I got a red guy on the bottom and a blue guy up on top. Specifically, I have HNO3 and Na2CO3. It's a mole-to-mole -mole conversion of different compounds. This is what's new in stoichiometry. When you're going from moles of one thing to moles of another, you use the balanced equation, BE, balanced equation. All that means is we're just looking at the coefficients. So I look at the big numbers for HNO3 and Na2CO3. I don't care about anybody else. So in this case, here's HNO3. There is a two in front. So where the HNO3 is in my ratio, I'm gonna put a two here. And then Na2CO3, that's this one. Oh, there's only, you know, there's nothing here, which means that there's only one of that compound. So I go to this and I just put a one. And do you see how balancing is so, so, so important? If we forgot to balance this, there would be no number here. And I would have put a number one down here. And then the, the answer would have been completely off. So that's why just make sure that you balance. Okay. Units cancel. We're almost there, right? We're at this stage, but we want to get to grams. So another ratio. Put the unit you don't want on the bottom. Okay. Ooh, that's Na2CO3. Grams of Na2CO3 goes up on top. Just going to extend this. And it's a gram to mole conversion of the same compound. What are we going to use? Periodic table or balanced equation? Periodic table. Good job, guys. And remember, when we use the periodic table, you always have one mole. So wherever the word mole is, you put a one there. The number of the mass goes with the gram unit. So now I got to go back to my periodic table. I got to find the mass of Na2CO3. So you try it, I try it, and let's see if we get roughly the same answer. I have two sodiums, so 22.99, you could round to 23. I got one carbon, I got three oxygens. So I get 105, I might have to extend this. There we go, 105.99. Okay, cancel the units that you can, they're opposites on the same side and on, you know, on opposite sides. And you see how I'm only left with grams. Okay, so I like to just get the answer after that, and then if I need to do any, like, conversions, I'll just do them quickly um, afterwards. So you can multiply all of the numerators, multiply all of the denominators, and then do the final division at the end. I just like to go from left to right. Anytime that I see something in the denominator, I think DD, denominator, divide. Anything in the numerator is multiplication. So 2,500 divided by 63.018. Now the two is in the denominator again. So if you don't use parentheses, press divide by two. And then since the 105.99 is in the top, I would multiply 105.99. Okay, and I get roughly uh, 2,102, we'll say 0. 0.4. 
and that's grams of Na2CO3. Now, if we go back up, we should always just see if we answered the question. The question is, was sufficient uh, sodium carbonate used to neutralize all of the acid? But they tell me that they gave me two kilograms. The unit is kilograms. So the first thing I'm going to do is just to, you know, compare the two. We should have the same unit. This one is in grams. So let's just convert it into kilograms. Kilograms of Na2CO3. And just like before, if we go from kilograms to grams, I times by 1,000. So going the opposite way, I will divide by 1,000. So I take this number and I divide it by 1,000. And I get 2, I'll say 2.1, right? 1, 2, 3, yep. So I'll just say 2.1. To kind of make it easy. Okay. Now, what does this stoichiometry mean? This means that if you used... Oh, that's, that's ugly. If you used the 2.5 kilograms, right? Or if you spilled 2.5 kilograms of the nitric acid, which is what happened, right? That was the initial that we saw you need so get to the habit of saying like you know you used up so you need right the answer that you're solving for is what you need to neutralize all of this you need 2.1 kilograms of the na2co3 if everything in an ideal perfect world you need 2.1 kilograms to order counteract and neutralize all of the 2.5 kilograms of the acid. But what happened? You used how much? Two kilograms. Right, that's what the question stated. So if you needed 2.1 kilograms, but you only used two kilograms to quickly spread over the area, did you? neutralize it all? Was it sufficient? No. You needed 0.1 more kilogram. It was not sufficient. Too little. So that's what this whole idea of like finding theoretical information out. Doing stoichiometry is all about theory. What you should have used or what you need. So in this case, since our answer is higher than what we used. It wasn't sufficient. We used two less. Yeah? Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Let me know in the comments. Love helping you guys out. Give this video a like if it did help you. And if you want to, you can subscribe. That will just get the word all over, you know, in the YouTube universe that, you know, this free chemistry help exists. I think it's pretty cool. I don't know about you guys, but... Uh, we also have physics and math videos as well at the present moment. So if you guys need help in those classes or have friends in those classes, let them know about us. All right. Love helping you guys out. And as always, have an awesome day and I'll see you in the next lesson. Bye bye.